Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about normal goods and inferior goods and two other curves, uh, curve diagrams basically, such as the income offer curves and angle curves associated with these two goods. Now before I get into the curves, I just want to give you a short reminder on what normal goods are and what inferior goods are. So normal goods based of economics is basically when your income increases, when your income increases, the demand for your the good that you like would also increase. Uh, but for inferior goods, when your income increases, the demand for the goods would decrease. Uh, now, I just wanted to understand the consistency among both of these two goods is that the thing that they have in common is the change in income. So when your income changes, either the demand for the good would go up because of your preference and the demand for the good would go down. Uh, so I would like to explain uh, the normal goods using a diagram and an example. And that would basically, okay, so consider you have two goods, X1 and X2, and we're going to consider X2 going to be our uh, normal good. Okay, so now the first thing I need you to draw is your budget constraint. Now this is the uh, this is the line that would determine your income. Your income shifts would be determining by this budget constraint. And now, f and then choose your preference, your optimum bundle that you would like to consume of this good. And we draw an indifference curve of that. And that would come off as like come off as like this, and uh, now we would consume x two of the good. Now, what do we say about normal goods? We've said that when your income increases, the demand for the good increases. Now we need to show the shift in income. So that's when you draw. That's when you shift your budget curve to the right and upwards, right? And then again, you choose your preference, your optimum bundle. Since this, we are considering this to be our normal good, it's going to increase. And we're going to draw our indifference curve as well. Right? And then from here, we're going to draw our preference point. Now we're consuming more of X2. So you can see that we have increased our consumption of X2 as our income increased. That is called as normal goods. So I just need you to understand that this shift is your change in income. All right. And this is when it, uh, and, the, and because of the change in income, you are going to consume more of X2, right? Now we're going to observe the inferior goods. Now, what do we say about inferior goods? Uh, as your income increases, your demand for that certain good would decrease. Now, just like before, let's draw our first budget constraint. Right? And we're going to draw our optimum bundle point. We want to consume the, uh, a certain amount of X2. So we're still going to consider this going to be our inferior good. Right? And we are going to consume at this point. So right now, we don't have any shifts in income as of now. As of this moment, we don't have shifts in income. So we're going to be consuming at this point because that's all we have. And that's what it, and we're, we are consuming this for sustenance. And we're going to draw our indifference curve. Oh, wait, that didn't come off right. Right? And then we're going to draw the optimal price point and the optimal quantity. So now we're consuming this many units of X2. Now, whoa, what happened? You just got a promotion, you just um, got employee of the month, and you got a big bonus, you got an increase in income. So what happens when you increase your income? Your budget constraint would shift upwards and like that. So this becomes your new income. <clears throat> and so this is your inferior good, right? When your income increases, you no longer want to consume this X2. No, you're done. So now you're going to be consuming less of X2. And so your preferred bundle point is going to be over here or anywhere above this point so that you consume less of X2 because you no longer live for sustenance now. You have enough money to consume other goods that you like. So this is going to be your um, indifference curve. And this is going to be how much ever you um, consume less than before and
basically meaning that you'd be consuming more of X1 now. So now that we dealt with normal goods and inferior goods, income offer curves are going to be really simple. Income offer curves is basically when we connect uh, the dots, dots aka the demand and bundles that have resulted from the shifts in income. When we connect those dots together, uh, that's going to be your income offer curve. So now, for example, if I'm going to shift, if you're going to increase your income again, right? So this becomes M prime, double prime, M, M prime from the first shift and M double prime from the second shift. We have, this is our optimum demand, our optimum demand bundle. And this is going to be our indifference curve. And now we're consuming more of X2 because that's our normal good. And as our income changes, as our income shifts, we um, want more of this good. So, right. So income offer curves is basically when we connect the dots of all these demanded bundles, that is going to be our income offer curve for normal goods, right? And this is also known as your income expansion path. I'm sorry. Um, So we've looked at income offer curves now and in the same way for the income offer curve for inferior goods would be going somewhere around like that. You don't need to be worried about the way the curves look. It's just basically making the idea straight that you connect the dots of the, demand, the um, optimum demand bundles from each income shift. Uh, so now as we proceed to angle curves, angle curves is basically when you observe, um, focus only on one good and the income. Now to give you an example, that would be, now for normal good, um, you're going to be focusing on X2. <clears throat> so for angle curves, you'll be observing X2 and the income. So we're going to just see how the demand of the good changes when we change the income. Let's be, so here we used to look at two goods, X2 and X1. Here we're just looking at the relationship between the income, as the income changes, how will the demand be for X2. So from just looking at this, we can see that as the income increases, as the income increases, the demand for the good would also increase. So your angle curve for um, normal goods would just be like that, just an upward sloping curve. And for inferior goods, um, it's going to be, well, let's find out. So this is going to be for X2 and that's your inferior good. I'm sorry, that just happened. Uh, and that's your income. So what did we see again? We're gonna see the change, uh, how the demand changes for X2 as we change the income. So what do we say about inferior goods? Inferior goods is basically when your, when your income increases, the demand for this good would decrease. So basically, so basically let's just assume that we're going to label our income. So let's just say we're going to start with 100. Just to make this idea more clearer for you, in, um, 200, 300, right? And this is going to be, um, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and 0. So what do we see as our, okay, so I'm just going to say when our income was 100, when we had a low income, we used to consume um, up to 50 units because we didn't have any choice and that's all we got. And hey, and now our income is increasing. So now I'm going to reduce our consumption for this X2. And now we reach to 300. I'm just going to completely have a drastic change and just consume only up to 20 units. And there you go. That is going to be your angle curve for your inferior good. Because as your income increases your demand for the good will also decrease for X2. Because in angle curve, just keep in mind that we're going to only look at one good in relation to the income. And we're going to be observing 
uh, how the demand changes as we change the income. I think I've said the um, definitions of uh, both the goods a couple of times. I'm really sorry for that. You might know it, but uh, I just want you I want you guys to get the idea really well. So uh, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And also just understand that for normal goods and inferior goods, these are the two goods that always relates to income. They only change with income, not with prices. There are two other goods related for prices. Those are um, gifting goods and ordinary goods. Those are two goods that change with prices. But all you need to know is that normal goods and uh, inferior goods all changes with income. And also just, you know, just for easy reference, just know that the income of a curve and the angle curve for normal good kind of looks the same. So that should kind of ease your understanding. Um, yeah, that's all.